Welcome to Social Elo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. In this installment of Prophetic Academy, we're going to speak about Bible study. There are many people who are, they're very gifted prophets, or they'll say that they flow frequently in the realm of the spirit. They flow in spiritual things. However, their knowledge of the Bible is lacking. And sadly, it shows. In fact, that's a part of the reason why many of their prophecies fail. A prophetic ministry, it has to be rooted in the Word instead of the Spirit. More on that later. But let's start off by looking at um, why false theology has been said to lead to false prophecy. In 2 Peter 2, starting verse 1, it states, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. So it speaks about false prophets and false teachers. More than likely, a false prophet is also a false teacher. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction? For many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So many shall follow their pernicious ways. The other part of this is, if you're not a prophet, you also have to know the word. Because when a prophet veers away from a word, then it is time to check out. Now, prophets are very revelatory. And they may say things that you may have never heard before. So you have to, you have to be careful about how you go about testing the spirit. Jesus said many things. For example, in John 6, in the 6th verse, it tells us that many of his disciples followed him no more. Because he was saying some things that they were like, oh no, this is too hard. I can't buy this right here. It defied their theology. So there are some things like, you need to hear it out and take it to the Lord. He will show you in his words if what the prophet has revealed is true or not. And some people want to say, oh, this is um, extra biblical revelation. And first of all, and this is part of studying to show yourself approved. When you look in the Bible, there are many prophets whose names were not even mentioned. When you look at the New Testament, Jesus had 12 apostles. But how many of those apostles have epistles that are in the New Testament? How many? So are you saying because what Peter has in the Bible meant that the things that Thomas may have come across, that his revelations weren't significant also? Now, they're not in the Bible, and even the life of Jesus. John said that the things that Jesus did, it's like if everything that Jesus had done were to be recorded, at least at that point in time, there wouldn't be enough books to house them. So even during biblical times, not everything that had a biblical impact, and you, I hope you understand what I mean, not everything that have a, had a biblical impact was added to the Bible. So some people say, oh, there are no prophets today because the, the Lord has spoken through times in diverse manner, through prophets, etc., but now he's speaking through his son, the Word. I don't want to go there. But when you study the Bible, you'll realize that not every prophet, not everything that they did or said was added to the Bible, even though those things were significant. And in those that have information in the Bible, it doesn't mean that's the only thing that ever happened to them. For example, Jonah. It only tells about his one trip to Nineveh. 
But there are other scriptures that speak about Jonah being a prophet. It, it doesn't tell the entire story. So by saying that there are no new revelations today, it doesn't mean that if there's a new revelation that the Bible needs to be opened and, and recanonized. No. One of the things um, Daniel wrote was that in end times, that knowledge would increase. There are things that people have read the Bible for years and didn't understand. And nowadays, those things are being opened. The Lord is unlocking those things. Because how many times have you read the Bible? Okay, that could be a loaded question, especially with this lesson. But how many times have you read the Bible? And you read something, and then something jumped out at you, and it's like, how's it I didn't notice that before? Likewise, there, there's things the Lord is saying, and what I mentioned earlier, about a prophetic ministry being rooted in the Word as opposed to the Spirit. The revelations are going to be rooted in the Word of God. All of them. And if not necessarily exact, it will kind of set a precedence for why the Lord gave a prophet that kind of revelation. But those who are way off, they'll say things that you'd have to twist scriptures in all kind of manner in order to make things so. Like one prophet has come into mind that some have called him Jesus, like he's Jesus in the flesh. But then the prophet was recently caught sinning. Excuse me? Jesus was without sin. He became sin for us on the cross, but he was without sin. So, so things like that. Things like that. Or a prophet may tell you, don't test the spirits. It's like, what do you mean don't test the spirits? I'm supposed to believe you when the word of God tells me to test the spirit? And in fact, I'll go there because it ties in what I mentioned about a prophetic ministry. It is rooted in the word instead of the spirit. In 1 John 4, verse 1, it states, Beloved, believe not every spirit. So again, a prophetic ministry is rooted in the word as opposed to the spirit. And you know how Jesus said that some people say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Etc., etc. And there's some people who use the Lord's name, but they're not of him. So you have to test the spirit. And a part of the testing the spirit, the Holy Spirit will point you to the word. And there are times you may hear a person give a message and may be like, mm, I don't know about that. And then you ask the Lord, okay, Lord, is what the person say true? And then the person may lead you to um, 2 Peter 2, verse 1, where it speaks about there will be false prophets among you. And then per the Holy Spirit may also lead you to Matthew 24, when one of the first things Jesus said is, let no one deceive you. And he spoke about false prophets. And those are the ways the Holy Spirit will confirm if a word, if something is what I like to call a word or the word. A word is what a lot of prophets do. Oh boy. Yesterday I saw a video and someone was doing an expose on a quote-unquote apostle. And the apostle was teaching people how to prophesy, claiming he was doing a prophetic activation. The Lord, he didn't have people practicing how to prophesy. The Lord taught them. He told them when to speak. An example is when the Lord called Jeremiah, he was a young man. And the Lord gave Jeremiah a vision and said, what do you see? And Jeremiah mentioned the almond bud. And the Lord told him what it meant. But what the person was actually teaching was divination. Now, and this is part of knowing the word of God. Because even the person who was doing the expose, that person was wrong in some aspects. In Jeremiah 18, the Lord told Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house. When Jeremiah went there, he saw the potter working. And then the Lord spoke to him, making analogies with the potter and the clay. 
but it's divination, like I mentioned in another video. If um, you just start looking at, for example, objects in a room, and then you start, quote unquote, prophesying, that's divination. I had to stop the video as I was recording. I won't go into the details, but the Lord had given me a message for someone. And the person actually showed up at my door a while ago. And the message that I've been holding on to for a couple of weeks, I was finally able to deliver the message. And it was a beautiful thing. And I'll touch on something else. A lot of you want to be prophets, but you want to go out on stages to preach like all over the country. You can be a prophet in your own home, in your own neighborhood. Now, this is not the first neighbor the Lord has given me a message for. I mean, there's a house to my left. The Lord had me um, relay a message to them about blessing them with a baby. That baby has been born. And there, and there are others. But the message I was able to give a while ago, I mean, it was a beautiful message, well-timed. And I could see my neighbor coming, and I tried recording as much as I could, but then I stopped. But like I mentioned, beautiful thing. So being a prophet is not always about going all over the place and delivering messages. It's where the Lord tells you to go. In fact, I spent a few minutes speaking with the neighbor, and I was like, uh-oh, where was I? But the Lord graciously reminded me, I was speaking about the difference between a word and the word. A prophet can have a word for you. Like I mentioned before, that prophet or that apostle that was actually doing divination by looking at things in a room and then making up things. Oh, I feel like the Lord is saying, or the Lord is saying when that's not the Lord speaking. Because prophecy is not from the will of man. It is from the Holy Spirit inspiring us to speak. A word. A prophet can say, God loves you. Oh, God, God's getting ready to open doors for you. Or, uh uh. And I know I did say a message like that previously about God's getting ready to open some doors. But, but it's different. Because, for example, when the Lord gave me a message, if you saw it, I was doing a video on something else, and then I had to turn to Revelation 3 7 through 8. So there are different ways. But a lot of people are giving words of encouragement. And those are words that don't come to pass. And it's part of the reason why people need to study. Because when they study the prophets, for example, which is a good part of the studies, you realize why some prophets failed. Like Hananiah, he was giving false prophecies in the house of the Lord. And just false prophecies, period. And because of that, the Lord pronounced judgment against him. The Judean prophet in 1 Kings 13, he was a man of God. But he followed a lying prophet and ended up dying. Jonah was disobedient. But you also look at the life of Samuel. When Saul had become king and was making a transition from the system of judges to the monarchy, Samuel could ask people, whose oxen have I, whose ox have I taken? Whose dunk have I taken? Have I taken any bribes? So showing that he was a man of God. So part of studying is also looking at the lives of other prophets. If they fell, what made them fall? If their ministry was successful, what made it successful? Obeying God. You also learn when you look at the kings. What were some of the differences between David and Saul? How is it the Lord rejected Saul, but David did some major sins, but the Lord still forgave him? That's a part of Studying the word. Because a word, you may point to the Bible. Revelation 19.10, and I'll read that now. Revelation 19.10, John had an encounter with an angel, and he was going to worship the angel, and the angel said, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. Even that tells us something. As a prophet, don't have people worshiping you. Not even close. Nothing that even looks like worship. We're fellow servants. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. 
worship God. A prophet who points you to him or herself is either a false prophet or pretty close to becoming one. Like when you look at Jeremiah, not Jeremiah, but um, 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings 18 on Mount Carmel. Elijah was pointing people to God, away from Baal and to God. John the Baptist, he started pointing people to Jesus. He was paving the way. So it says, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So a person who prophesies and they're giving the word, it is the word of God. It is glorifying Jesus. Apart from how it glorifies Jesus, it is not a lie. God is not a liar. So if it's a false prophecy, that does not glorify Jesus. If it takes people away from the love of God, the love of his word, that is not the word. It is a word. And Jesus is the word. And we see it in, um, in John 1. Where it speaks about in the beginning was a word and the word was with God and the word was God. But also like um, 1 John 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. They call Jesus, it calls Jesus the Word. That's part of the reason why prophets need to know the Word. Hmm. It sounds like I'm just about to change the title of this video. Initially, I was going to call it Bible study. But no, the title is going to be The Word. Because prophets also have to get conformed into the image of Christ. Have to give prophecies that reflect the image of Christ. Prophecies that point people to Christ. And one of the things that point that a how a prophecy points people to Christ is because it, it is fulfilled. God, he spoke in the Old Testament about how he's doing a new thing. It's like, can you not perceive it? And it's speaking about now it spring forth. In Habakkuk 2, speaking about writing the vision, making it plain. And it said, though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come to pass. Even Balaam, by the initial cause, him a prophet. But then he was into divination. So in the book of Joshua, he died and was labeled a soothsayer. But even the false prophet said that God is not a man that he should lie. And it's not human that he should repent. And also looking at the story of Jonah. How is it Jonah told the people Nineveh was going to be destroyed in 40 days? But it wasn't destroyed in 40 days, yet Jonah was not a false prophet. But some false prophets, or even errant prophets, were on their way to becoming false prophets. They will use the story of Jonah in an attempt to cover themselves. Another error some prophets make, a prophecy doesn't come to pass, and they'll even blame God for why it doesn't come to pass. But the word tells us, let God be true and every man a liar. So even with Jonah looking like a liar, or potentially looking like a liar, and there's several reasons why we know that it was truly the word of the Lord. One, it's in the Bible. Two, the Lord even had to tell Jonah twice to go to Nineveh and what to tell them. And then afterwards, there was a conversation when the Lord told him that shouldn't he save the city after the people have repented? And we know that we are told later on in the Bible, it is not God's desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So all this stuff... It ties in. That is the word. In John 8, the woman had been caught committing adultery. Jesus pardoned her. It may have seemed as if it was a violation of law, but there was biblical precedence because he showed mercy. Just like when the Lord appeared to Moses and he said he would be merciful to whom he would be merciful, and he shows grace to whom he will be gracious. So there's biblical precedence for that. But then the Lord told her, go and sin no more. 
And if a prophet is leading you into sin, there are certain things I recently covered that, in a sense, I won't beat a dead horse to death. But a prophet needs to know the word. Have a relationship with the Lord. Have a relationship with the Bible. Knowing the word of God. Because there are times when the devil try to bring stuff up. In Luke 4, 1 through 13, we see how the devil tried tempting Jesus. And he even quoted a part of Psalm 91. But the Lord knew he was twisting scriptures. And we even get to know about the devil by looking at the word. In Luke 4, the devil tried tempting Jesus by twisting the word of God. The audacity, the audacity of trying to tempt the word, tempt the word by using the word. See, it worked with Eve where he could twist the word of God, but not with the word. So the Lord straightened him out. I mentioned about in Revelation 19.10, the angel said, don't worship me. Don't do that. I'm your fellow servant. I mentioned about Elijah on Mount Carmel pointing people to the Lord. John the Baptist pointing people to Jesus. Even the Holy Spirit, who represents Christ here on earth, he doesn't speak of himself. In John 15, verse 26, Jesus said, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So Jesus, who was always pointing people to the Father, he was representing the Father here on earth. And the Lord said what, when he ascended back into heaven, that he would ask the Father to send a comforter. Again, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth. Mm, nothing. The Bible tells us about a spirit of error. Some prophets are prophesying based on a spirit of error, such as a familiar spirit. Leviticus 19.31 tells us to regard them not that have a familiar spirit, nor seek unto wizards. Deuteronomy 18 speaks about not consulting a witch, a necromancer, etc., etc. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. He glorifies Jesus. Which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. The Holy Spirit points you to the Word. So again, in prophetic ministry, he has to be grounded in the Word instead of the Spirit. Not every spirit is of God. But the Holy Spirit will point you to the Word, the Word being Jesus. It's about Jesus. He died on the cross. He is the way to the Father. Another thing why prophets have to know the Word, on Mount Carmel, Elijah had to confront the false prophets of Baal. They're false prophets today. There are some religions that were, and denominations that were founded by false prophets. Joseph F. Smith in Mormonism, he was a false prophet. Ellen G. White, false prophet. <laughs> Jehovah Witnesses, founded by a false prophet. Hmm, that brings this up. And those organizations that I mentioned, they have their own Bibles or a book that is like a Bible. In fact, they may use the Bible kind of like as a gateway to get into those books or their Bible is laced with commentaries from the founding prophet. A lot of those organizations, they defend their founding prophet more than Jesus, which lets you know who their God truly is. That may have hurt some people's feelings, but like I mentioned, prophets confront things like that. 
point out the false because the enemy loves to place truth next to error. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, it states, Study to show thyself approved unto God. Study the word. Show yourselves approved unto God. A, <coughs> excuse me, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Many prophets are prophesying, and it's vain babbling. Vain babbling. So study show yourself approved, and to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Study the word. And I've mentioned before in other teachings, but many prophets want to be like Elijah, Jeremiah, Moses, but the prophet to be like is Jesus. And not that you're going to become an antichrist, because you're many antichrists in this world, but be more like Jesus. Humble. Pointing people to the Lord. Righteous, holy, meek. And I call it, kind of, it falls into the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He helps conform us into the image of Christ. One thing about many false prophets is that they've exalted themselves, or they've tried to exalt themselves to the same level or even in place of Christ. An antichrist is in place of or against Christ. You put yourself in place of Christ, you have put yourself against him. He will not yield his glory to another. So there are benefits regarding studying the word. There are many people who um, they claim that they're doing apologetics, defending the faith but they're not fully prepared. And the way they're Christian apologists, apologist, there are others who are apologists for their faith. One of the last disputes I got into was with a Catholic. I had commented on someone's video on YouTube. The person commented on the video. But all I saw was Mary, Mary, Mary. Mary did not die for anyone on the cross. A wonderful woman she was, but she's not the Savior. Oh, your person was speaking about praying the rosary and something to Mary. I'm like, you're putting someone in place of Christ. And then I engage a person, I start speaking, quoting scriptures. But the person wasn't coming back with scriptures. A lot of reasons to know the word. And yes, there are times when people may misunderstand the things that you say. Again, John 6 to 6. John 6, 6 to 6. People walked away from Jesus and followed him no more because he gave a hard teaching. But it wasn't ungodly. The Lord did a lot of things that were um, unconventional. But he also spoke about the word of God versus the traditions of men. Sometimes a person you as a prophet may have to confront is your or a pastor. I could continue, but I think I've done enough to at least wet your palate to get to know the word.
meaning knowing Jesus, and also the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation. The Word is the sword of the Spirit. God bless you.